<laughs> so today we want to look at benchmarking. Um, specifically why, uh, when we looked at several steps of ICT strategy formulation, and we said we start with the mission and vision statements. We carry out an external evaluation to determine uh, opportunities and threats, and then we carry out an internal evaluation to determine um, strengths and weaknesses in comparison to uh, a competitor. So this is where benchmarking comes in. This is where benchmarking comes in. <coughs> so we want, uh, these are just some of the objectives that we, we are looking for to understand the concept of benchmarking. We all, you all did um, ICT design and selection and implementation. We talked about this. Um, I remember actually I was a little bit disappointed that some of you did this because you hadn't done strategy first. You hadn't, you hadn't looked at most of these other modules and if you notice ICT design selection and implementation is actually, it, it pulls together several of these, eh? but it would have been better if you had started with strategy first. But anyway, let's hope uh, the, 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 the dots will, 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 uh, will align. So we want to understand the concept of, of benchmarking and what it is and, and its relationship to strategy management, how, how it contributes to strategic management. We are also going to look at some standards uh, which guide benchmarking. <coughs> and hopefully you'll have skills to initiate a benchmarking project. Um, one of the things we sincerely hope for as people who teach is that you go with these skills <coughs> to your workplace. It's one, it's very, very challenging to introduce uh, ICT as a, a, a strategic tool in an organization. Very, very difficult. Why? Because most of the time, um, at least for me, my experience was <coughs> ICT was never <coughs> seen, sorry, <coughs> was never seen as a priority. Although it does so much, it's never seen as a priority. Um, my, my perspective of my experience was that, oh, ICT was there to solve, to come, come in and sort out your internet, if you're disconnected, your laptop, your computers, <coughs> and that's it was never seen as something that could come in as a strategic uh, tool, never at, at any point. But you're now ambassadors. So our, our, our hope is that you start these projects in your workplaces. There will be a lot of resistance, <coughs> especially if you have members of management who are not open-minded, but <coughs> it, <coughs> It's an extremely important tool. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me for a minute. Sorry, give me a minute. I just want to take something to <coughs> bring down the coughing. Give me a minute, please.
Apologies, um, I'm back. I hope <coughs> I won't cop as much. So um, what is uh, benchmarking? What is benchmarking? Why are we interested in this particular topic? So it's one of the things we do to ensure quality or to impose quality management to our projects, strategy, uh, strategy development. <clears throat> it's considered an extremely powerful tool to bring about improvements. So the weaknesses that we would have identified internally, <coughs> they could be weaknesses to, due to our processes, weaknesses due, due to our capacity, our resources, whatever it is, and we want to re-engineer. <coughs> so that is the, 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 the main purpose of benchmarking. This is a, this particular diagram simply explains how, how benchmarking is carried out. We start with our performance, evaluating our performance. And in that time, you internally determine what you do well and what you do not do well. And then you relate that in, in, in comparison to others. How are others doing it? <clears throat> I remember when Umu started in 1993, for a good long time, Umu was one of the few universities that handed over the transcript and certificate on the day of graduation. This was something unheard of in a university like Makere, because Makere at, at, for a long time was the university, the only university. So I remember when, when Makere wanted to change that, they came to Umu to benchmark, to find out how this was done. So this was essentially looking, look, they were evaluating their business processes, their procedures, to improve them that immediately a student receives what is rightfully, what is due to them at the end of the academic program. So the, that, that process is done. I, I also remember um, we've, we've, we have also seen uh, situations where um, we've now, we're now seeing in Uganda, private or community-based universities that were uh, universities that were developed as community as by the community now seeking government to take them over. So Kabale University went first. So when Mountains of the Moon wanted to do the same, they went to Kabale University to benchmark about the process so that they could also do it as efficiently and as quickly as possible. <clears throat> so we we have seen that being done. Eh? So now the question is, how do we do that? We also want to learn the same process for the sake of ICT strategy formulation. Once you have evaluated yourself and then looked at the other, at your competitor, uh, a competitor that you'd wish to, to be like, or someone whom, uh, <coughs> someone whom you see uh, carries out best practices as far as a particular process is concerned, you come to a creative adoption. Creative adoption, meaning we do not want to copy and paste. Why do we not want to copy and paste? <clears throat> Remember everything stems from our vision and mission statements. Every organization is unique. As much as we are offering the same thing, every single organization is unique. Makere is unique in its own way. If I was look at the teaching and learning uh, industry, <clears throat> Makere is unique in its own way. So is UMU, so is KIU, so is IUIU, so is uh, UCU. The reasons for their coming into ex existence, <clears throat> there's something specific about it. Let me just speak about UMU, about its uniqueness, eh? <clears throat> because I was part of it from the beginning, I was a student. I was one of the pioneer students who were the third group to join UMO. 
the two course units that Umu first started teaching were business administration and management and ethics and development studies. So I was a student of ethics and development studies. <clears throat> and this is where the university really came out strong to speak about what the Catholic Church envisions the growth of a human being to be. They were, uh, the university was, was trying to distance itself. We have, as far as development is concerned, we have very many perspectives. If anyone has made that, taken time to look at the field of development studies, there are very many perspectives and views and, and approaches and so on and so forth. But the Catholic Church has its specific view. <clears throat> Coupled with that, they wanted to, um, <clears throat> they were saying, many of the ills we have today are, are because development has not happened in an organic manner. So they wanted to introduce development in its perspective according to the Catholic Church, and two, to bring out the ethical elements so that we uproot the, what I would put in quotes, the wrongs, that what has not been done right. <clears throat> that is why you see now for every course unit, for sorry, for every module or every, every yeah, even course unit, the undergraduate, <clears throat> an ethical element has to be added to it. An ethical ele element is part and parcel of it. That very much stems from the identity of UMU as a Catholic institution, the identity of UMU. <clears throat> or sorry, a Catholic founded institution. So that is its identity. So let us say if, uh, if Umu was to benchmark from Makere University, you can't perform things exactly the same way because Umu cannot lose its identity. So that's where the creative adoption part comes in, where the, <clears throat> the unique identity of the organization sits. Let us also look at uh, another industry, uh, the telecommunication sector. We look at uh, the unique, oh, the, the, one of the giants, MTN. <clears throat> now, MTN, when you look at it, MTN, I understand, is part and parcel with multi-choice, the providers of DSTV. Now, MTN is unique in the sense that it is an it is uh, it is homegrown. That means not homegrown, meaning Africa. <clears throat> it is an African. It is a purely African initiative. Now, look at one of its subsidiaries, DSTV. DSTV has made a great effort to grow talent in Africa. Uh, if any of you has seen uh, channels on DSTV like Pal Magic which has made an effort to grow the arts industry in Uganda. The, the, we, we now see movies made by Ugandans, movies acted out by Ugandans, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and they've gone ahead and done so for other countries as well across Africa. That is because of the unique identity of multi-choice and MTN. The fact that they are homegrown, they are, Af they are African, it's an African company. I doubt very much that another company can come in and take the same strides as the way, the way DSTV has done, but it's because of its unique identity. So <clears throat> the unique identity, which is spelled out of, by any organization, by its mission and vision statements, would then guide the creative adoption the re-engineering process of procedures <clears throat> and so on and so forth. Once that is done, we then expect a breakthrough in performance. A breakthrough in performance, that is the expected outcome. Or rather, the design of new processes, which we then hope to improve our output. But this is of course done at the uh, when we are, we, if we determine this at the, at when we are evaluating our strategy. Remember, benchmarking feeds, feeds 
the strategic formulation process. <clears throat> so here we have a history of benchmarking. We've talked about this before um, when we were doing I, uh, ICT design selection and implementation. And it was started by Xerox and their intention was to um, identify their weaknesses and improve. So this process began with Xerox itself and it has <clears throat> expanded. So let's look at the definition or the concept of benchmarking itself. So <clears throat> a company is comparing itself, an organization is comparing itself, comparing one or more of its business processes and performance metrics to the ind industry's best practices, the industry's best practices. <clears throat> so when we're looking at benchmarking, we're saying we want to look at someone who does things better than us who actually uh, uses the best practices that are that can be identified so it's so the simplest term is be benchmarking is learning from others so it's it's intended of course it's an intended objective is to it is to learn how to do things better but faster and cheaper rather than sitting down and trying to reinvent the wheel you look at what somebody else is doing <clears throat> so why do we benchmark? We first of all we benchmark so that we can highlight uh, areas which need attention or need need improvement. We identify our <clears throat> our strengths and weaknesses, our strengths and weaknesses of ourselves and of our competitors. and so on and so forth. You can read through this. Eh? <clears throat> but one of the things I had stated earlier, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. So that's one of the reasons why we benchmark. <clears throat> Here is a sample questionnaire, which could, which could use, which, which can be, which has been used. But although the questions are generic, one can design them according to um, <clears throat> what they, uh, according to your context. So look at this questionnaire. It has um, levels, most, some, few, and none. So here it is to determine how well <clears throat> the, the uh, identify the areas of weaknesses. So the first question says, processes have been documented with measures to understand performance. So we are looking at business processes if they have been documented. So here we answer, we, we respond uh, if all business processes have been documented. <clears throat> Employees understand the processes that are related to their own work. I remember, I remember one time when I was head ICT, every time I went to the HR, to request for something, sorry, sorry about this, to request for something. And every time she kept saying, that's, that is not according to policy. Right? <laughs> and every time I say, but, but what is this? What are these policies that we don't know anything about? <clears throat> so that, that could be one of the measurements to, to say, these business processes, we don't know anything about them if we don't even know the policies. Eh? So let's, I would imagine if, if we went through all UMU staff to find out those HR processes, how many of us know them? And I'm sure most of us would be in the non section. <clears throat> Direct customer interaction feedback or studies about customers' influences, decisions about products and services. So here you would grade yourselves. Eh? And the, at the end, you would score yourself and find out which, what needs to be improved. So this is just a sample. Uh, it's not cast in stone, but it's a sample. <clears throat> so what, so far, any question before I go further? Do we have any question? No, doctor. Okay. 
So what is the benchmarking process? We start with the planning. We start with the planning process. So the planning process is, um, which I'll go, go through this in details, but it involves these four steps, planning, data gathering, integration, and action monitoring. So in the planning process, we determine the roles and responsibilities because it's it's also quite it's a project in itself benchmarking is a project in in itself so we determine the roles and responsibilities we determine what what we wish to benchmark <clears throat> so remember benchmarking goes hand in hand with the internal evaluation so the internal evaluation would identify where our areas of weaknesses are we identify the process we wish to benchmark, again, based on the internal evaluation. Then we determine who we need to benchmark. A competitor who has been identified as performing according to best practices. <clears throat> you document the current processes, what exactly it is you do. You document it. Then you identify the outputs required. You determine the data collection methodologies. So it is important at this point to involve top management at this stage. Yeah, remember at every stage, you want the involvement and support of top management. So here are some guiding questions. <clears throat> that are that can help the benchmarking process and these are basically the key points that we've noted up these are simply um, the guiding questions that would would uh, would help what are the key business processes so here we would here we would determine the key business processes that need improvement the key business processes that actually produce that we know should give us the output we need there are some business processes you may decide to get rid of because they, they actually add no value. Then uh, what functions where improvements are most essential? You identify the functions where improvements are essential. Um, you look at the members of the benchmarking project. This is where we think about uh, roles and responsibilities, uh, who's going to be part of this team. We have a question. Uh, Thomas is asking, or let me first finish this and I'll respond to Thomas's question. Uh, the critical success factors and, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> you also ask your, your, yourself questions about um, where you want to benchmark. Is this truly the organization with best practices, best in class, uh, best in class processes? Would you be able to access their information easily? Do you have a way in? Do you have a way in? So you have to also think about where you want to collect your data from. You have to think about where you want to collect your data from. The second is data gathering and analysis. So once you're done with the, uh, the planning, you should now be ready to, co to collect your data. What you want to do is to have a gap analysis. Yeah. You need to determine where you were before, where you are now, and where you want to be, yeah? So th th there should be a clear mark to show where the gaps actually are, hmm? where the gaps actually are. So we start with collecting data from the selected organization. 
you normalize performance data, that means um, <clears throat> you, you clean up your data. Here, here is a, a typical example where you would, you'd have determined, this is where we were before, this is where we are now, and this is where we want to go. Then you construct a comparison matrix to determine um, the performance, the current performance, identify outstanding practices, analyze the gap, analyze the factors that create the gaps, communicate the findings and, again, and gain acceptance. So here are some review points for this phase. Start with the project team members. Determine who has the best, who has skills in, uh, in, 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 in analytical skills, because you have to analyze your data and, and do so appropriately that it will make sense. Have you identified a gap in performance? You look for where there is effectiveness or lack of efficiency and responsiveness. Then you compare your, your business processes to those of the identified analysis. Brainstorm on better performance, reasons for better for performance. Have a brainstorming session. Make comparison of the documentation for both for both companies. The documentation of their business processes. Have a comparison to see where the gaps are. Make flowcharts of the of the of the two processes. That means your the your, your particular organization and the, the, the company you're using to compare yourself with, and so on and so forth. We've done this before, we've gone through this before. Senior management's involvement, yeah? <clears throat> Make a presentation to senior management because they need to see where the gap is. That revised process, because here you're proposing a revised uh, process. We have to ensure its adaptability. Consider its adaptability. Consider the adaptability of the revised process. For top management's sake, make sure that you convert the improvements to financial gains. Yeah, make sure you convert the improvements to financial gains. Carry out a cost benefit analysis to find out what will be lost and what will be gained. The third process is integration because the previous process was presenting your findings to management. Now, <clears throat> once management has bought in, you have to integrate this into the organization. How do we do that? These are some questions we um, we would consider. We have to communicate the findings to the people where the changes need to be done, where the, the, the pitfalls have been found. Yeah, we have to communicate this to these ones. Why? Because they are the ones who are going to absorb the integration. Communication to senior management for approval. So that is part and parcel. We had already talked about it in, um, in, in, in uh, data gathering, but integration part, it's also important to have that constant uh, conversation going. Sharing it with the departments that are involved. That is communicating. The, that this is where we communicate to the, the, the people who are concerned. Does will this affect um, some external stakeholders, for example, the suppliers? Will this process affect them? And therefore, do we need to communicate to them as well? 
then specifically communicating the output, the desired output or the quality that we would expect. We should have different types of communications for different audiences. For instance, for top management, they may want to see a, a bigger financial gain. For those who are going to absorb the, in, the, 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 the new, <clears throat> the re-engineered processes, they need to know that this is going to actually improve maybe their quality of work, um, efficiency and effectiveness, and maybe even protect their jobs even better. So we, you need to, we, the, the different types of communications need to be given to the different audiences. Reviewing the integration process continued. We, uh, we have also some more questions which we can, um, you can ask yourselves, have sufficient steps been taken to find out the gaps in every department? Have all issues been addressed properly? Why? Because uh, there's obviously going to be resistance. As long as you're changing anything, there's always going to be resistance. It is important to, uh, to consider all issues raised. Why? As a team, you, you may be a team that is carrying out this benchmarking process, but that doesn't mean you, you, have, you, have, um, you have seen it all. A point may be raised that you, didn't, you, you hadn't considered before, so address it. And addressing any, any objection improves the adoption process, the change management process itself. So you can go through these questions in your own time. The last one is action and monitoring. So action and monitoring is essentially now the new uh, process procedure is now being carried out. Whether it's a new system, whatever it is, the, the, the process is now being carried out and monitoring that it's, it's being adopted, monitoring that it actually produces what we wish for it to produce. So we also have a line of questions that can, can guide this process. You can go through them in your own time. Let's look at uh, benchmarking methodology. Now there are several methodologies. You can go ahead and carry out some research on that. Um, but of course we, we shall present just one, just one for the sake of it. Eh? All methodologies, first of all, begin with identification of your problem area. Hmm? Identification of your problem area. Then identifying the industries that have similar processes, identify the leaders in that area, surveying the companies for which one has best practices, visit the company with the best practices, improve and implement. So those are, that is basically, uh, the, 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 these methods we are, rather the, the stages we are pointing out that every methodology should have or will have are simply what we've been discussing previously, the, the process of benchmarking. Now there are different kinds of benchmarking depending on what, we what it is we want to um, achieve, but here is a list of them. Could be process, financial, performance, product, whatever it is, or strategic benchmarking. It, it, it depends on what it is you want to benchmark. Benchmarking is not uh, unique to strategy uh, formulation alone, but to so many other things. <clears throat> so depending on which method, uh, on which, which particular type you want to go for. Time management, make a time chart just to find out it, because benchmarking is a project. Like any project, it must be, uh, it must have a time schedule and when you want to do what process. So here we have a sample, which simply points out uh, the identification process, how long it will take, the, the, create, the creative team, identifying the organization and so on and so forth. You simply give a time frame for each so that you can have a mile, you, 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 you come back to um, push the people responsible to achieve the process. So here we have, 
a business process improvement cycle. So it's simply, all, all of this we're doing, we're simply repeating what we've discussed before, where we identify our problem area, measure performance, benchmark process, um, identify the relevant improvements and so on and so forth. It's, this is, there's nothing new about it. You can go through it in your own time. Eh? So again, um, the, 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 the cycle repeats exactly what we have been repeating over and over again. So I won't go through this, eh? but here we have a general framework for benchmarking, which you can also adopt, or you can pick another that you find more appropriate. But they all have, they all talk about the very same things we've been talking about. These models, this framework simply summarizes what we've been talking about. Eh? The planning phase, uh, the experiment phase, the improvement phase, and we go, we go back re-evaluating ourselves over and over again until we, we have achieved what we want to achieve. So it's, it's simply carrying out the, the same processes that we've been talking about previously. Here are some questions to help us, um, guide us. I'll post these again also on Moodle, just like the one we had of yesterday, and we can have further discussion in, on it. Do we have any question so far? Uh, no questions. No question. Anyone else? No question. Thomas had, a, a, I think, a, a question here. I'll see. see. Um, is it possible for a research project to be a benchmark benchmarking project for some processes slash systems at my place of work? Now, Thomas, um, one, I would uh, first let me answer that question in terms of research. What is research? Research is about closing a research gap. Yeah, a research problem. Now. Um, the benchmarking process, you, you may use, I would say you may use the benchmarking process to collect your data, but it, the benchmarking is not a research method in any way. If the benchmarking process maybe helps you as, as an organization, you're carrying it out, then you may use it. But I would not say I would not say that you could use it as a research project because research in its proper sense is about closing a research gap, yeah? So benchmarking is about improving an organization's business processes, improving an organization's business processes. That's what it is about. Now, if let us say you are, um, um, a profession, a, 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 an academic in the field of business administration, yes, I would say maybe you'd look at approaches to benchmarking and so on and so forth. But in our case, we are ICT professionals. So our perspective should be on the ICT, should our research perspective should be ICT best. But two, we must always also remember we are closing a research gap. We're not closing an organizational gap, business process gap. So it is important that we remember that. Thomas, I hope thank I've answered you. your question. Yes. Okay, thank you. So we have no question. Yeah, maybe doctor just want to give some example like benchmarking like at the workplace. Yes. Yeah. So initially, like the data collection, we are using FileMaker. It's just a program, a standalone program. You enter data and then it is stored on the server on a local network. Mm. So we have few collaborators from Indiana University. So they were using a red cap, research electronic data cap. Mm. Like data you collected and access to online from wherever you are. Mm. So to benchmark or now they are doing it. 
So in order for it to be done, we realized you have to have like a public IP address and a domain whereby mm -hmm. anyone in the organization can do. Then you needed to have like servers, go for them, they had like two servers, mm -hmm. a data server and a file server. Mm -hmm. So when at the process, how they were doing it and the budget, like having the different servers, then the security login access and all that. So we realized like the budget were big. So when we tried to share the findings, so we realized for our case, we needed to have one server, like we couldn't manage the two servers. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, for the security, like the login, they have some other mechanism like the, the dual step, do, the dual step authentication. So we realized we couldn't copy and paste everything they were doing. So we realized we would have an easier way, like having the Google authentication, which is free instead of using the other one that we need to buy. So okay. we are able to benchmark and have a red cap set up on our system. And then we are able to have one server, like some of the things they were doing, we are unable to copy everything. So we had to find a way of like, using the local things that could be done. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Twin. I, I think Twin gives us an example of how they, they creatively adopted this new procedure. Thank you. Thank you for that example. Thank you very much. Now, let us look at. Uh, strategic planning yeah let us look at strategic planning again we're looking at this in a generic perspective not yet coming down to the ict perspective so um we basically want to look at the role of planning in general for any organization sorry sorry Oh, I see, seem to have missed some of my functionalities. Let me first move this out of the way. Okay. We want to look at the role of planning, uh, define strategic planning, then look at the benefits of strategic planning. Uh, we want to list and describe the steps for effective strategic planning and look at SWOT analysis. So this we've done already before. I'm sure most of you have done this before. So the question is, what is planning? Yeah. The question is, what is planning? So essentially planning is like drawing a map, sorry. It's like a map, a map which will guide uh, your team on what to do. Mm -hmm. It will guide your team on what it is you want to do and how you're going to do it. It's one of the most important steps in business, uh, in, in business and time management. One of the most important steps. Why do we plan? The planning process helps us to identify our goals and objectives, what it is we want to achieve. We formulate strategies to identify those goals. Yeah, we also arrange or create steps to help us achieve to the steps that we will we'll need to carry out to achieve what we want to achieve. So what is organizational planning? So in organizational planning, um, we analyze, we begin by um, analyzing the organization's environment. We look at the internal and external developments. We evaluate our accomplishments and resources. In this process, we be, first give me a minute. There's some things that are missing and I don't know why. Oh, my... I'm failing to get some of the, my tools which I used to point out, but let me try to um, deal with what I have right now. 
The planning process involves building a team, a team that is going to, um, that, that is actually going to carry out what needs to be carried out. It involves modeling. So modeling is essentially saying, um, this is this is the team we're going to work with. This is what we want to do. These are the these are the objectives we want to to achieve. So that at the end of it, you have a gen, a general picture. The entire team has a general picture and consensus. Hmm? There's a general picture and consensus on um, on on what it is we want to do. You establish a vision and mission the goals and objectives. You develop the strategies, articulate the organization, these strategies should articulate the organization's plan. Then also you develop implementation methods and controls. So that is organizational planning. We have two scenarios here. Yeah, let's just have two scenarios and let's have a discussion. The first scenario, you're the manager of a small furniture company. You have two stores situated around the outskirts of Kampala. The company has been established for five, year, for five years. You have 12 people working for you. And these are in departments of sales, finance, purchasing, and operations. Your stores have regular customers who revisit. You are aware of your, your status as a small company, but you have aspirations to expand into and further around central Kampala. Yeah, you have those aspirations. Can we brainstorm for this company now? The small furniture company. Can we just have a brainstorm, a brainstorm about this first scenario? The, the owner wants to expand into Kampala, further into Kampala. What does this owner need to do in terms of planning? What does this person need to do? Yes, please. I think uh, the owner needs to first do an assessment of uh, what they are doing, the clients they have, uh, and also look at what other people are doing. And you know, because there is expanding, and yet uh, in the areas where you want to expand, you don't have the kind of people. For example, if you are dealing in furniture, uh, mm -hmm. And then you want to, it depends on the customers you are looking at. Is it office furniture? Is it a, a furniture for the high class people? Is it furniture for people who are low income earners? So they need to do all of that uh, before they do the expansion and also look at what other people are doing in that same business, uh, people who are bigger. Uh, for example, if I'm going to deal in corporate furniture, I may want to look at Nina Interiors, I may want to look at maybe one song, something like that. Okay, before we go to looking at the competitors, what does this person need to do first in terms of planning? What does this person need to do first? Yeah, doctor. Yes, please. This person needs first to look at his small company because we are looking at the number of staff they are having, maybe the, the capital, the budget before expand. If they are to move outside Kampara, do they have the, the manpower and the resources to establish the different branches? You okay. have to first realize what the organization is doing and the, like the challenge they are having and how they are planning to overcome if they are to move up of if you are to expand to come but they need to first analyze and, and okay. see the work and the capital now my question is all these are correct what uh, what you're saying but if how does this person do it me i think the first thing the the first thing this 
individual needs to do is to create a team. He has 12 people working with him in sales, finance, purchasing, and operations. The first thing this person needs to do is to create a team. And it is the purpose of this team to start the planning process. Hmm? To create that team. And, and you, I would say pick someone from every department. And it's the mandate now of this team to come up with a, a strategic plan to, exp to expand. And uh, that means uh, they, they, they help formulate the vision together with the owner of the company, vision and mission statement. Who are we now? Who do we want to be? Where do we want to go? Something like that. And then the next step is how are we going to do it? So that for me, the first step would be creating that team from these two, uh, from, from these two, stations that that, that that basically from his departments, his or her departments, we don't know if it's a he or a she. That's what I would do. First thing is create that team. If we go back here, look at team building. The team building is the one which will help to, we begin to analyze the organization's internal environment and external environment. The owner is not going to do it for himself or herself but it's the team that is going to do it. For me, that's what I would suggest. Any other suggestion? I think also the team, there must be deadlines you said for, for yes. the team. Yes. So now the, the team would then have um, a, an estimated time frame of what it is they are going to do, all the, the different steps that they are going to take. What, who will do what and in what time and so on and so forth. Eh? And then they would go ahead and analyze as, as uh, both, uh, both Twine and Robert Lubanga had suggested. Then they begin to analyze, in the analyzing the external environment, they find out about other furniture companies that are there, those that are special, those, those especially that have penetrated the Kampala market, how have they done it? Um, best practices, which is the best practice that we want to uh, benchmark on, and so on and so forth. And it analyze itself internally. What is, what is it we're doing? How can we do it better in order for us to achieve that goal? Yeah. So that's when the other steps now come in. But the team building part, I think, is the first one because that the team is not going to do all of that. This individual will not do it for himself or for herself. So th this is where it is important now for you now as heads of department, as these are some of the things that you need to consider as let us say you're going to embark on this in your profession as head of an ICT department. The first part is 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 not to is it it's not on you. The first part is building that team. Building that team that is going to help you carry out these new changes. Yeah, to formulate that strategy that you need for your department. We want to avoid, remember the scenario I gave you yesterday of uh, the gentleman who told me that he had a policy but nobody knew about it. You want a scenario where you build some, you create something and it is adopted throughout the organization. Throughout the organization, it is adopted. There is someone who is doing a research, one of my students, one of the students I'm supervising, is doing a research on um, uh, ad, in, uh, enforcement of national ICT policy. Yeah enforcement, how to enforce, that policies are created, but there is a gap. There is a gap between the implementation and, and actually um, enforcing this policy. So someone can even decide to say, let me do a research to find out um, uh, the, the relationship between the, uh, countries that develop these policies um, 
together with all their agencies or countries that, and, and those, those that don't, those who do it separate. And if level of, if, uh, the level of adoption, and to see how that affects adoption itself. So the first step I would suggest for all of these, either of the, one of these scenarios is to build that team. Yeah, is to build that team. It, we were tempted immediately to want to solve the, the, the problem, eh? but the issue is not to solve the problem, but first build the team, then the team comes together to formulate those strategies. I hope I've, I hope that point is understood. Yes, you are, Doctor. <clears throat> now, let us look at planning, planning fundamentals. There are three of them. We have the first one, which is strategic planning. So this one is, is, is concerned with creation of strategies that, are, that will be used to achieve the organization's mission and vision. Hmm? Plan strategic planning. So we look at the future of the organization and this is normally done by top management. You look at the bigger picture of what your agency is doing and where it wants to go. So you build these strategies to help determine how the organization is going to is going to act in the next two, three, four years in order to achieve that objective. That those that strategic planning is essentially going to guide how your organization is going to act. What actions is it going to take? We have, of course, our focus is strategic planning, but we also have other types of planning. We have tactical planning, and. Uh, this one, the, this supports strategic plans by translating them into specific plans, eh? very, very specific plans. And these go all to the lower levels of the departments. So their purpose is to fulfill the strategic plan. Okay, so even for your ICT strategic plan, it should also have tactical planning to ensure that your policy is affected throughout. The third is operational planning. So this one is concerned with um, making this, the, the strategic plan operational, functional now. Hmm? It's actually functional at the business process level. And normally these are the policies. The policy normally guides, guides the tactical and the operational planning. So why is strategic planning important? Why is strategic planning important? We move out of our day-to-day -day activities and we look at the bigger picture. We look at the bigger picture. We stop the day-to-day, -day, usually the day-to-day -day planning involves firefighting sometimes, eh? or it's just something monotonous, you're going through something monotonous. But once you come out of it, you're looking at now, I, we need to grow. We can't just be comfortable with the status quo. So that's why strategic planning is important because it drives an organization to grow. And that is the objective of ICT. ICT should be there to support the organization to grow. That is why it is important to look at ICT strategy planning so that you see how you can help an organization grow. So the specific, the strategic plan should be able to identify specific goals. You identify and articulate them. You should be able to describe the specific actions you need to take to achieve those specific goals. Then it should be reviewed every three to five years, depending on, on, on um, the expiry date of your strategic plan. Now, there's a difference between strategic planning and long range planning. Yeah, there's a difference between the, the two of them. The first, with strategic planning, we consider the external environment. 
We also consider the, the inputs from internal and external stakeholders. We focus on change. We actually focus on change. And then we also look at the future, the vision of the future. While long range looks inwardly at what we want and where we want to be. It also looks at uh, budgets, fiscal, fiscal budgets. There's minimal involvement of stakeholders. Eh? It's focused on maintaining the status quo. So just some of the features we need to look at. Strategic planning is goal-based. Any strategic planning model should be goal-based. Eh? It, it is goal-based. Most common that you, you must have goals within there. These goals are intended to achieve the mission and vision statements. Yeah. We examine the issues that the organization is facing. Strategic planning models should be focused, should be organic, meaning they, they start their, their roots are within the vision statements, the vision and mission statements, the values of the organization. So it's organic in nature. So therefore, even the ICT strategy should be rooted in the organization's mission and vision statements. It should be organic in nature. It really should be organic in nature. I remember actually, we, when I was head ICT, we had one major, I remember a, a, a major challenge we had as a department. The boss that I was reporting to, he kept insisting on bringing ICT people from Centenary Bank to advise the UMU, um, the UMU ICT department. And we kept clashing in a sense that the two, are, the two organizations are from different industries. And there are four that the needs, the, the, what ICT needs to answer to cannot be answered the way uh, Centenary Bank answers its uh, ICT needs. Take an example. Any university, any, any education institution must not be profit oriented. That is one of the key points that is not understood. As if, if any uh, director of a school or a university, whatever it is, if they take an institution to be profit making, then they have failed the industry of teaching and learning, the education industry, they have failed it. Any education in the school should not be considered as a profit making, it should not. Education is very much in the same category as healthcare. It's a service, yeah, it is a service. Although it, they must break even, that is true, they must, or they must have operational costs, but it's rare that it is, it is focused on profit. It is very rare that profit is something that is aimed at. Very, very rare. That is one. This is very different from a bank, which is profit oriented, extremely different. Two, the information needs of a bank are not the same as, as a university, two completely different things. A university is first and foremost should exist for research. So whereas in a, in a, in a bank, you'd want to block certain sites from, from your camp, from your employees, you don't do the same thing with an education, a, a research centered institution. You don't do the same. I remember one of the points they raised to us as ICT, they were saying that um, almost ICT is open that, that uh, students and staff can access pornographic sites. So we came out and we said, yes, we understand UMU is a, a Catholic founded institution and it does not support pornography. And we actually pointed out that one time ICT did block pornographic sites, but the disadvantage with it, the, those filters that, that are there, they even block genuine sites. I remember one time there was, even before I was head ICT, there was a, an argument on, on, the, on the UMU mailing, mail platform, email platform. Well, um, a, a researcher, a lady, she was a lady who came from Australia. She was a researcher and she said, 
I'm trying to access a, access a genuine journal to access content for my research, but um is blocking me that I'm accessing a pornographic site. So it even, it, because it, the, those filters basically are, are focused on getting certain key, certain keys, and which may end up blocking even a genuine site. So we, we had to, the ICT had to drop it, and this time I wasn't even head ICT. Then we went ahead and raised another argument. Let us say there is somebody, considering this is a university, let us say there is somebody who is carrying out research on pornography. What do you do? Are you going to stop them from researching on pornography? It's a researchable area. So therefore, we argued and said, we cannot start blocking. Then they went ahead and told us that we need to block torrents, video torrents, and torrents for people downloading videos and so on and so forth. We said, yeah, we can do that, but that means we also block YouTube. Now, at the end of this lecture, I'm going to send this video recording to ICT and they will upload it on the YouTube channel, the university YouTube channel. So that means if, if ICT blocks, you can't even access this recording. So in other words, what I was trying to say is my boss did not see, did not understand that ICT must grow, must, must grow itself from the mission and vision statements of the university, which, which is first and foremost, a research institution. That's what it is first and foremost. Eh? I remember the very first vice chancellor of UMU, uh, Professor Michel Lejeune, he kept saying that this is a university, it's not a seminary. And of course, as students at that time, we were students, we didn't understand. But as I came in now as an employee of UMU, and I came in to head the ICT department, it began to make sense what you were saying, saying this is not a seminary, it is a university. And a university, whether it is Christian founded or religion founded on a religious institution, whatever it is, it is first and foremost, a research institution and research must be given freedom. That is essentially why organizations like RENU came up to support the research, the research, the research objectives of universities. That's why they came up. They must be given freedom. So that's the that's where the organic part comes in. And you as heads ICT. You also, you, your ICT strategies must grow organically from the mission and vision statements. Yeah. The team element, hmm? the team element where I talked about earlier is extremely important. Creating teams that you, you get, get the picture of the micro world. Strategic planning must never be a one person uh, driver must not be driven by one person. And please, I would, I would add you look at the case study that I've uploaded. Look at that, that case study I've uploaded. Please look at it and let's have a discussion. First thing next week on that on on that case study. The issue of the issue of teams participate participating in in creating that larger picture. It starts with uh, developing the micro world the different departments, the different scenarios, and it, the teams the, the teams help uh, bring out the different business scenarios that need to be created. They also bring alternative scenarios, so which helps create alternative strategies, and then you pick the best possible strategy, the best possible strategy. You saw examples, we, we, I think, Twine gave us a very good example of how they they looked at the scenario in a in a compet in a competitor and they they readopted it according to their resources. So far, any question? No, doctor. Okay. So these are the steps to strategic planning. And these are basically the steps we shall also go through when we 
come to ICT strategy planning. First is situation analysis. So this is where we assess ourselves internally. Then we look at the external competitive analysis. We identify, so the, the first one is situation analysis is when we look at our strengths and weaknesses. Outside, we look when we're looking at the external competitive analysis, we're looking at the opportuni opportunities and threats. So these two, these first two steps guide us to identifying um, our strategic goals, what we need to do. Then we carry out a SWOT analysis. So the SWOT analysis is fed by the first two steps as well. We design the strategic plan, write up the plan, implement, and measure for success. So let's go through this in detail. Situational analysis. These are some of the guiding, the guiding steps that can, can help you. We determine distinct competences. Eh? Where, are we where are we strongest at? What makes us unique? Hmm? What words come to mind when you think about us? You can then also begin to ask yourself also in terms of ICT, your ICT department. What is unique about your ICT department? Hmm? What are the competences that, that, that can speak about your ICT department? Yeah. Marketing evaluation. Here you look at your product, the price, place and promotion. Where are you in terms of your market, your market value? Where do you rate yourself? And you can also think about yourself in terms of, of, of um, in terms of your organization, where, where you may not be able to price yourself, but you can think of yourself as a service within your organization. Where would you uh, place yourself? What is your value? And how can you promote yourself? What is the issue that can promote you? Then you make an estimate of your service lifespan. Hmm? Product slash service lifespan. In terms of an overall organization, of course, let us, uh, we can consider what products you sell, how long, what is their lifespan, uh, what is their maturity. Um, then you look here, you look at the cycle itself eh? from the time of emergence to its growth, maturity, and decline. Then we, you can also um, think in terms, if you think about it in terms of, 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 of the ICT department, think about it in terms of the service you provide and also the products you use, the devices you use. You can think also about in, in terms of that. Uh, look at the external, who are your clients? or customer, What are your customers' perspectives? So an overall organization is who they serve. For UMU, let's say it's the students. Uh, parents and students. If if it is the ICT department is internally those that you serve, yeah. What are their perspective? What is their perspective of you? In the situation analysis, you determine what data collection methods you can use. If you're going to use surveys, focus group discussions, interviews, or if you've been collecting data over time. You can use the documentation that you have you have you that you that you have in its existence. Even using documentation, it, you can look at it in terms of um, what documentation you bought computers, let's say at this time and for how long have they spent there? Do you have uh, uh, expiry date for your devices and so on and so forth? Even for uh, demand for service, eh? if someone brings in a ticket that there's a problem, how long should that problem exist? Expectations, satisfaction levels, and future needs. What do they value? How do they think we are doing? How are their needs? How are their needs changing, evolving? Yeah. So this is an interesting one, especially for ICT. The needs of ICT users evolve over time. We have people, for example, if I think about Umu, 
We have lecturers who are tech savvy and who want, who are so hungry to use ICT and they want to use whatever is that is available, hmm? whatever is available and whatever new thing that is there, they want to use it. Then there are those who are quite shy about it. Eh? So you need to answer the needs of all. In this situation analysis, this is where you, you paint this picture of yourself. The external competitive analysis. So here is where you scan the external environment. And this is where we also benchmark. This is also where we benchmark. In this, in this time when you're scanning the internal external environment, you, you also scan for your opportunities and threats. Yeah. Now, in relation to benchmarking, you also determine what data collection tools you wish to use. So we can see where benchmarking now comes in in strategic planning, where benchmarking comes in to fit. Uh, the strategic planning process. Here are just some guiding questions you may have. Who else is providing the service? Are we spreading ourselves thin? How is our product performing in the market? Is our service and product consistent with our vision and mission statements? Again, we shall relate this to ICT when we come specifically to look at ICT strategy development. identifying strategic slash critical issues. So here we are looking at problems or opportunities. So the problems or opportunities are, are assessed from both the internal evaluation and the external evaluation. Not every, not every strategy we shall grab one to is a problem. It could be an opportunity that is, that is presenting itself, an opportunity that is presenting itself to you and you haven't taken advantage of it. Yeah. It is something that should not be ignored. Now use the team in this time, the team that you have selected, use it to brainstorm. Brainstorm on what are the problems and what are the opportunities. Then rank them in terms of priorities. Then list List them, just list them and, and, and see um, which one comes first. Eh? You can then vote. You can actually vote and say, just have a secret ballot to say, which one should we handle first? Which one should we really focus on? Because you also don't want something that is too ambitious. Eh? Uh, you don't want something that is too ambitious that at the end of the day, when you evaluate, you find that you cannot afford uh, what you want to achieve. Eh? Performing a SWOT analysis. So the SWOT analysis is also fed by um, the, 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 the first two steps, the in, internal evaluation and external evaluation. This is where you identify your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Hmm? Use the opportunities and threats to consider possible obstacles, possibilities and, and obstacles, sorry. Possibilities and obstacles. Designing your strategic plan. Now, remember, like I, I want to reiterate what I said yesterday. At the end, I, we don't expect that at the end of the at the end of this module, you should be able to develop very great and wonderful strategic plans. No, the purpose of this module is to take you through the process and the steps of developing a strategic plan. As we have we have seen, uh, developing this plan is not a one man show you find it is, it is done by everyone or everyone is involved in it. Now let us consider, if we can think about it in terms of ICT, the entire ICT department would have to be involved. But then on top of that, certain key stakeholders would also have to be pulled in. For example, those in finance, somebody from finance, uh, somebody with, in operations, uh, some, the top management itself must be involved. So you, top management may not be part of the team, 
but they must be involved uh, from the beginning and they must be reported to at every single step. Yeah. So uh, design, in designing your strategic plan, here are some things that you may want to consider. First and foremost, the strategy, strategy should provide clear and concise answers, clear, clear and concise answers on who we compete with, who is our competitor. Hmm? What unique value do, do you add to the market? To the, what unique value does the organization add to the market? The resources and capabilities that we have and how are we evaluate, how are we utilizing them? How do we sustain our unique value? So this must be clearly articulated. Yeah, this must be clearly articulated. Now, your strategic plan should first of all be flexible. Yeah, it should be flexible. Why you're going to evaluate it, and when you evaluate it, you may see ah oh, this may not be this may we need to we need to change something here and there. Hmm? And I yesterday I gave you the example of the 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 the, the, the factory where uh, where I sit on the board, and where we had we had first we we first the management first brainstormed on strategies to increase green leaf, and then when they realized that the market was acting competitors were acting against them, they said, okay, let us also counter. Mm -hmm. Let us also counter. So there must be some room for flexibility because the ultimate objective is to break even to, to gain a competitive advantage. So there must be flexibility. It should be addressing critical issues. Mm -hmm. Critical issues then it should be addressing issues that are within your control. Certain things are not within your control. For example, now we are all experiencing um, high fuel prices. That is beyond any organization's control. Yeah, that is beyond. It should be in line with the vision and mission statements. Modeled around best practices. This is where the bench benchmarking process comes in. It should encourage innovation and creativity. It should have a time frame, which meaning it should uh, it, it normally strategy strategy strategic plans have a three to five year lifespan. Why do we first of all? Why do we carry out strategic planning? It is either to survive survive and it's not either to sorry it is it is to survive and thrive it is to survive and thrive that is one of the objective that is the, the primary objective of strategic planning writing up the strategic plan you use one or two people to write these are part of the team so they are not the ones who came up with it it's an entire team but the writing process here we're talking about now the writing process can be done by one or two people. Uh, once it is done, circulate a draft and gain feedback, hmm? then, which is then improved. Seek feedback from stakeholders and management, top management. Now, a strategic plan must be implemented. Yeah, a strategic plan must be implemented. It is not meant to sit in a shelf and 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 it, we don't see any results from it it must be implemented so first how do we start the implementation process by communication letting everyone know we now have a strategic plan hmm? it we, have, we now have a strategic plan We then create room for the needed changes. The need, especially those those changes that that can uh, that can give us quick wins, quick wins in the market. Yeah, quick wins, quick wins with the, those quick changes that we can make. We go ahead and make them. 
always keep the priorities up front, the, pri the strategic priorities. These are communicated and they are the ones that we want to, 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 to carry out, where we want to carry out our quick changes. Always ma maintain a sense of high urgency. As you communicate it, maintain a sense of high urgency. This must be done. The faster you start it, the faster you begin to see your gains. There must be a show of enthusiasm. So basically the person leading your strategic plan must be enthusiastic, enthusiastic about your strategic plan. Sell the benefits, yeah? So all of this involves actually communication. Maintain a constant two-way information exchange, meaning as you are implementing it, gain, get feedback. Get feedback from the people that uh, you're, you're, where you're trying to push this, uh, these changes. Provide praise for significant uh, uh, accomplishments. Eh? Where there are failures, uh, acknowledge them, focus on, uh, on, on picking out the lessons that need to be learned. Not necessarily criticizing to say, oh, so-and-so made this fail, no, but focus on where change, uh, uh, where uh, flexibility can be, can be done. What are the things that can lead to strategy implementation failure? One is lack of participation. So the participation, first of all, starts from the team, building that team that is going to develop the strategic plan, to communicating all throughout the process, communicating the steps, eh? having workshops where you, you communicate to everyone else what is, the, what is being done. So that the, the lack of participation and lack of, of communication, for me, I'm rather, I'd rather rather turn this into a positive to say participation and communication are key. A poorly thought out strategy. So a poorly thought out strategy would definitely come if you lack the first two. Lack of participation and communication. If you don't sit down with a team to brainstorm, to, to gain feedback from every, from every single person, that, that will definitely come up with a poorly thought out strategy. Uh, failure to hold people accountable. So this is, uh, again, lack of participation or communication, failing to have a time frame on when each milestone must be achieved, picking the wrong people for the task. So th this one generally needs you to have a, a people person uh, perspective. That is one, but two, also um, to know who are the key stakeholders. The key stakeholders within an organization will help make or break. So uh, take an example, heads of department, those are key stakeholders. Owners of business processes, who are the owners of, of uh, business processes. If you can identify those all the owners, then you can be sure that you'll get the best picture about what, what is failing and what needs improvement. Any question here, we have some references you can uh, go and read through. I've also uploaded uh, some materials that you can look at, but do we have any question so far? Yeah, thanks, Doctor. <clears throat> question that I have, mm. like in the organizations, you find they have one strategic plan mm. and it is according to the mission and vision. So yes. the I component at times is, is ignored. So as yes. a city managing that organization, is it advisable you develop your own ICT strategy or you can have the ICT component incorporated in the general strategy? Now, Twin, I thank you for that comment. Eh? Now, first of all, we are right now we're talking about the general strategic plan, which uh, the IT department may be involved, yeah, may, or not maybe should be involved, eh? should be involved in the general strategic plan of the overall organization. And some companies may talk about ICT being a key factor, others may not. Now, why are we looking at this as ICT people? We are going, the next topic we're going to handle, the next topic we're going to handle is ICT strategic development. So whether ICT is part and parcel of the overall, now, first of all, if the organization is developing a strategic plan, 
and IT, the I head of IT is part of that process, then you should push for it. But in case you find there's one already existing and you're not there. Now, this is where the next, the next session we're going to have next Friday will come in in handy. Because what we're going to do Twine, in this module is to show you the processes of how ICT can develop a strategic plan for ICT itself to see how ICT can come in to support the strategic objectives of the organization. Twin, I don't know if I'm, um, you're getting me. Yeah, I get, I get. I yes, get. yeah. So then right now we're looking at generically how a strategic plan, a, a generic strategic plan is developed. But after this, we're going to see how we can develop strategic plans for ICT that ICT then comes in to achieve the, the strategic objectives of the, of the organizations in general. So that gives that the, the growth of ICT an organic structure from which to grow. I hope I've answered your question, Twin, and I hope, I hope, I hope it makes sense to others. Yeah, you have, you have answered. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Is there any other question? Do we have any other question? No, we don't. Okay. Um, just to remind you, please go to Moodle. Um, I'm, I'm only seeing five people have enrolled. So first, look at the study guide. Two, look at the case study. Because this is the first thing we're going to discuss on Friday. We're just going to have a brief discussion. And it will be the basis for the, 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 your coursework. So please, please go through that. The reading materials I've uploaded for uh, the lecture on ICT, the introductory lecture, the lecture slides are there, plus these two videos, please look at them. The benchmarking lecture slides are there, plus reading materials, and the lecture slides we've had today, plus reading materials. So please look at those. And I'm also going to send these recordings to ICT, and hopefully I will, up, I will link up these recordings for before next week's, next Friday's lecture. So I hope I've answered everyone's question and, and I hope you're comfortable so far. I hope we are so far comfortable. Yeah, yes we are. Okay, so thank you. And I think then